Moving on, now I will request Ms. Vinita Bali, Global Business Leader and former MD and CEO of Britannia Industries Limited, who is also the jury uh, chair for GT Sabera, to say a few words. Ms. Bali is Global Business Leader with extensive experience in leading large companies both in India and overseas. She has worked with eminent multinationals like the Coca-Cola Company and Cadbury Swift in various parts of the world. She's also a champion for the cause of mother and child nutrition. Thank you. Thank you. Please, round of applause. Thank you. Good evening. Clearly, I am between our guest of honor, Dr. Debroy, and the main objective for today, which is really to recognize those individuals who have not let either their personal circumstances or their community and societal circumstances to come between them and doing what is right. I truly think that Sabera is doing an incredible job in taking the time and effort to recognize those organizations and more importantly, those individuals who are truly making a change where it matters most. It is at the grassroots level. It is impacting 500 people here, 2,000 people somewhere else, 10,000 people somewhere else. And I think it is that individual social responsibility that has kept the fabric of India still intact, that has kept the fabric of India still positive, that has kept the fabric of India optimistic. We heard from our keynote speaker, Dr. Rajendra Singh, and the incredible journey that he undertook personally to make a difference, to make a change, to make the world that we live in better than it otherwise would have been. And this is an evening to all those individuals who have shown that courage, that determination, that conviction to do what is right, whether they had the resources or they did not have the resources. I just want to make one or two other comments and then we let the evening flow. There was a lot of discussion on corporate social responsibility. And you know, whilst it is good to talk about social responsibility, I think from a corporate point of view, and this is my personal view, I've also written about this, I think if corporations, in fact, if every organization operated the way it ought to operate, which means to be considerate towards the environment in which we are, which means to follow all the rules, we talk about something called governance. And in my mind, a very simple uh, definition of governance is that I should do what I have to do, and you should hold me accountable for that. You should do what you have to do, and I should hold you accountable for that. Now, that applies to the government, the politicians we elect. It applies to the companies we work in. It applies to the schools we go to, et cetera, et cetera. This combination of, you know, everybody has to do everything ends up being a little bit of a suboptimal solution. So what do I mean by that? I used to work for a company called Britannia in India. That was my last role. We knew everything on how to make good biscuits, good bread, how to bring it to you fresh. We had no competency on running a school or providing health care. And what I think the 2% CSR ended up doing was ended up forcing organizations to look at avenues to spend this 2% CSR because guess what, it was mandated. There is no point, you know, if I'm a factory and I throw effluent into a river, um, that I be, you know, I be allowed to get away with that and then I spend 2% of my CSR cleaning the same river that I have polluted. So I do think we as a society have to think about where governance lies, and what are going to be the tenets of that governance. This is about individual social responsibility. It definitely is about corporate social responsibility. 
It is also about collective social responsibility. How do we as citizens of this country uh, conduct ourselves? How do we as citizens of this uh, country be more empathetic towards um, you know, our, uh, our communities and the environment in which we live? Like you know, Raj and um, uh, Siraj, who you heard from, um, I spend a lot of time in the area of nutrition. And uh, one of the things I have to say is, despite the FCI being full of you know, grains and so on, every day there are estimated about 185 million people who will sleep hungry. This is in a country where we produce enough food to feed everybody and more. This is in a country where our post-harvest loss is estimated to be anywhere between 35 to 40%. Those are the areas where corporates, I wish, would put their mind and their energy in terms of saying, how do we create better supply chains that would stem the loss, that would prevent people who are sleeping hungry from not sleeping hungry. We're also you know, a country where 40% still of children under the age of five are either wasted or stunted. These are the areas that require our time, effort, and attention. You will see in the awards that will be given out later this evening how individuals and organizations have taken up very arduous challenges, very, um, very bold challenges, and worked through them in their own way. And I think this is the energy, this is uh, the optimism, and this is the hope we need to celebrate and to realize. Um, the last thing I would say is, and um, you know, this is about how each of us have chosen to live our lives. Um, whilst we get excited about economic growth, I think one of the things that is very clear, not just in India, but in many other countries in the world, is that and I use these words, it is about development. It is not just about economic growth. Of course, the economic growth engine creates the resources to be able to do everything else. But if our country is going to lag on indicators of human development, which include things like access to education, access to equal opportunity, access to healthcare, access to water, access to, um, you know, Hygiene and sanitation, which, uh, you know, interestingly, a lot of work has been done in the last five years. I think if all of us did whatever we do with an emphasis on not just creating economic growth, but also making the lives of our people better, making our own lives better, um, having respect and regard for the environment. If I have respect and regard for a tree, I'm going to think twice about cutting down that tree. I think our education is not just about answering exams and getting into great colleges. It is about what do we value, what do we care about, and most importantly, how do we wish to live our life. So economic growth is great, and I'm sure Dr. Um, De Broglie will have uh, you know, a perspective to share on that. Equally, those of us who have been given the opportunity and are in positions of influence and authority, we have to take that extra step to ensure that that economic growth translates into great indicators of human development where we can, each one of us, turn back and look at this time in our lives and proudly say, we made a difference. Thank you. Request you to please stay back, uh, Ms. Bali. We'd like to offer you a token of appreciation. Thank you so much for being there throughout the jury and really leading this from the front.